Hello and good morning. Welcome back to the basic questions of life series. This is week 11 of 12. So if you're new to this channel and you haven't watched any of our previous sessions or simply you would like to re-watch some of them, please see details in the description below. My name is Veronica and today I would like to welcome our host Owen who is going to be answering the question, what is commitment? So I hope and pray you can understand how to place your trust in Jesus today. Good morning and welcome to another presentation of the basic questions of life. Last week, Charles shared with us the importance of the Holy Sabbath rest. A reminder that we can rest in Jesus Christ. I've enjoyed all the presentations of the last, um, over the past weeks brought me so much encouragement and it's caused me to make some decisions in my life to improve my Christian experience. Charles also reminded us that when the children of Israel were given the commandments, they, they promised to God that they would do everything that God had commanded them to do. But yet over and over again, they failed to do exactly that. They failed miserably. Why? Even when God cried out from the heavens with a loud voice and filled them with fear, the fear that did not drive them to obedience. Even when God promised them a beautiful place there where they would, they would stay like a carrot on a stick, they were still disobedient. Why? You see, it's in man's very nature to go against the will of God. Every time God directs us and shows us in his word, the best way to live our life, we struggle to be obedient. Why is that? Let me illustrate it with a story. The story of the frog and the scorpion. Maybe you've heard this story before. Well, the scorpion wanted to cross the river, so he wanted to negotiate with a frog. Take me over the river, he said to the frog. The frog said, I'm not going to take you over the river. Don't even come near me. You're going to sting me. I said, don't be silly, the scorpion said. Why would I sting you? If I stung you, you would drown, you would, you would die, and I would drown. So the frog said, okay, well, that makes sense. Jump on my back and I will take you over. So they jumped on his back and all was going well. The frog started to swim across the river. Midway through, he felt a sting at the back of his neck. The frog said, you stung me. He said, yeah, I, I stung you. But now I'm going to die and you're going to drown. Why did you sting me? I'm a scorpion. It's in my nature. You see, we have all been born in sin and shape and iniquity from the very first sin that Adam committed. It's something within us that pulls us away from God instead of towards God. And very often when we start our journey with God, when we start searching the Bible and we see these valuable instructions, we try our best to live them out. But the Bible is not a self-help book. The more we try, we will find that we will fail. You see, this is a spiritual book and it requires a spiritual walk with Jesus Christ for us to be successful. Throughout the Bible, God has been trying to teach the children of Israel and has taught uh, Christians that we can do nothing without him. I'd like to share with you two stories, two of my favourite stories in the Bible that illustrates this point. God came to a, a young boy, his name is Gideon, a prophet of God. When he came to, to Gideon, he asked Gideon, that, Gideon, I want you to fight the battle against your enemies. When God spoke to Gideon, he said, Gideon, he, he, Gideon came with, with, with many men, thousands of men, but God wingled it down to just 300 men, 300 men to fight a battle against 135,000. Now this does not make sense to Gideon, it doesn't make any sense to me. How would you feel if you had to fight a battle with 300 men 
and you had 135,000 men to, to fight against. He was afraid. But in that moment, he needed to make a decision. Will I trust God in this battle? God needed him to make a commitment. A commitment that would put his life in God's hands. Fortunately for Gideon, God came through well. The men, 135,000 men turned against each other and they, they, they killed one another. If you don't know the story, you have to go and read it. It's a wonderful story. But they could not have done it without God. The other story I'd like to, to share with you is the story of Joshua. Moses had just died. Joshua was before God and God was giving him instructions of how he would take the city of Jericho. God was speaking to him and Joshua wasn't saying anything And God, but the first thing God said was, Joshua, be strong and courageous. Joshua didn't say a word and as God continued to tell him the plan, he would say, Joshua, be strong and courageous. But Joshua still was there on his knees and listening to God Let's work out this plan. And God said, have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Every time I read that passage of scripture, I hear God say those things three times to Joshua. The third time is different. He says, have I not commanded you? You see, when God speaks in his word, he's not just given us instructions. He's given us a command. And with those commands comes the a recreative power to, to be able to do what God has called us to do. You see, with that last command, he came to his feet and he headed out and he rallied all the children of Israel together to go and fight the battle. I say fight the battle loosely because what God actually asked them to do was to walk around the city of Jericho. They had tall walls, big walls, and every day they had to just walk around that city and go back home again. On the seventh day, they went there and they rejoiced and the walls came tumbling down. Again, he had to trust God. He had to make a commitment to trust God's plan. I don't know about you, but in my life, I fight many battles. All too often I find myself fighting those battles by myself until I'm reminded that I have a God there to help me. You see, Joshua and Gideon, very often when we read these stories, we read about the battles they had on the field, but we forget to talk about the battle that they had in their own heart. They had to surrender to God in their heart internally before they could go and fight the battle externally. God calls us to surrender to him. So surrender to his will. And very often when we look at what God asks us to do, it doesn't quite make sense, but it's all about trusting God. It's all about putting our lives in his hands. The story is told of a family who went on holiday. The daughter and the father went off doing one thing and, and the mother and the son went to do another. They went to the beach to go and have a swim. Mother swims out into the sea, into the distance. And she, as she's swimming around, her son decides that he's going to join her. She sees her son in the distance there. And she cries out, help, help. Her son's in his early 20s, big and strong. He's a very strong swimmer. And so he begins to swim towards his mother. He draws closer and closer and realizes that something is wrong. She's swimming erratically. Her arms are flapping around. He cries out, what's wrong? It's my legs, it's my legs. And she's still flapping her, her arms around. He finally gets her and grabs her, but she's still trying to keep herself afloat. She, he says, mom, mom, I've got you now. I've got you now. But she's still moving her arms around. They both go down into the water. He has to let go. He pulls her back up again, but she's still flapping her arms around. He can't... He said, Mum, just, I've got you now. Just stop moving your arms around. She slips, he, she slips out of his arms again and she begins to go down into water. He lifts her up again. 
This time she's exhausted, he's exhausted, and she finally, with a big sigh, says, okay, okay, I won't fight anymore. He holds her close and begins to swim back to shore. Even though she was crying for help, she was still trying to save herself. Isn't that the story of so many of us? We think we have everything under control. We're asking God for help, but yet we're still trying to save ourselves. The commitment that God is asking of you is not that you, that, that, that you will be perfect in terms of, of following his instructions as though the instructions in and of themselves will make everything all right. The commitment is asking from you is that you will trust him to enable you to live out this perfect life that's written in this book. I so wish somebody had told me this when I became a Christian. When I became a Christian, I worked so hard to try and be perfect and secretly behind closed doors, I was failing miserably until I realized that only having faith in Jesus Christ and his ability to do in me what I could not do with, for myself, then things started to change for me. I started to rest on his strength and his power. I discovered a, a passage of scripture in the book of Philippians and it made it so clear for me. He said, it's I who works in you both to will, that's to have a desire, and to do according to my good pleasure. So my prayer life changed. See, when I go to prayer now, I say to God, if you want me to live this life, then you must live it in me. I found rest, peace and hope in that. He says, if, if you sin, Owen, if you fall over, if you make a mistake one day, know this, that I will forgive you. I am faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You see, the job of a Christian is to con continually to commit to him, to trust that he will make the changes required for us to live the life that he's called us to. So here's the thing. Just like that mother who was drowning in the sea, she had to allow her son to save her. Jesus says in the book of Revelation, I stand at the door and I knock. God doesn't barge into our lives and try and take over and try and dictate how we should, you know, when we should give our lives to him. He stands politely and he knocks. And he says, if anyone opens the door, I will come in. I will come in. If you would like God to come into your heart, into your life and to make a difference, simply invite him in. On all of these sessions, you've heard us talk to God. You've heard us pray. And all you have to do is say, God, come into my life. Come into my situation. I have battles in my life no one knows about. And begin to share those battles with God. Tell him all about it. Go into the details and ask him to take control. The commitment he wants from you is to trust him. You may be wondering why, why we're doing this. Why we're recording these presentations about the basic questions of life. It's because we have in our own personal experience seen the joy that comes from being a Christian, from having a deep and a meaningful relationship with Jesus Christ. And God doesn't want us to keep it to ourselves. Matthew 28 and 19 reads, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's why we're here. So what is baptism? Baptism symbolizes the, the, the transformation that we make from, from where we are right now and to, to becoming a Christian. I spoke early of, of Gideon, of Joshua, and of the woman who was swimming out in the sea that had to get to that place where they surrendered their life. This is what baptism is all about. 
we enter into the water of baptism. And as we go down into the water, full immersion into the water and come out, it's like a new birth experience. And that new birth experience is like just like a wedding. It's, it's you telling the world that now I belong to Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, it's more than just that. It's also you taking on this wonderful blessing that God has to, has to give you through that experience. That's why when, we, when I read this passage earlier, it says, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. You're no longer alone. You have the Godhead around you. You see, you were God's when he created you. Be also God's the second time when he died for you. The enemy would want to steal our joy, our hope and our future. And Jesus Christ came to turn all that around.
Today's presentation is about commitment. I can remember clearly the day when I committed my life to Jesus Christ, when I got baptised. When they plunged me down into that water and pulled me out again, I can remember the, the joy that I felt. I was smiling from ear to ear. I was walking on air for weeks. It's the best decision I've ever made. Now I still have battles that I have to fight. But all too often when I go back to the Word of God, I'm reminded that Jesus Christ is my helper. He says, I will be with you always, Owen. I will never leave you or forsake you. His love for me is endless. If you would like to experience that for yourself, if any of these messages have moved you or touched you, then please reach out to us. We'll be happy to share this wonderful news with you and your journey with you further. Let's pray. Dear Righteous Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to give you praise and thanks for this opportunity we have to share Jesus Christ to share your son and the love that he has for us. Lord, we praise you for being so faithful towards us, even when we don't deserve it. You've given us your word, and Lord, we long to follow it. But all too often we find that we fail, we fall short of what you're asking us to do. We ask thee, Lord, that not only would you give us the instructions, but you would give us the power to be able to live out this life. To your name's honour and glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And for more information on today's session, as well as the PDF summary, please see details in the description below. You can message us through the chat boxes or the link below, and we can talk more about today's topic. Next week is our last week of the series, so our four presenters will be looking at answering the question, where do I find community? Also, at the evening at 7.30 p.m., we will be hosting our last live questions and answers session, so please make sure you don't miss out on that. At the end of this series, we will be running discussion groups across the Lothians in five. So please message us so we can find place in one of those groups for you. Even if you're not local, you can still get in touch with us wherever in the world you are. And we would try to find someone close to you to help. If you are watching our videos in the future or on replay, you can still message us and we would attempt to connect with you. So please subscribe to this channel, click like, comment and share so our videos can be viewed by more of those looking for answers. See you next week.